Hello and welcome to another session for your postgraduate course on dance studies. This is going to be a session on international dance organizations. Now it's very important for you to start thinking globally because the times have changed and you need to know of the trends uh, the world over, you need to know who are your compatriots in other class, uh, countries who are studying dance and so this session is going to be about international dance organizations. I hope that when we reach the end of this session, many of you will seriously consider uh, the advantages of joining some of these dance organizations. But first, let's understand what, what dance organizations internationally do. Now it's important to re realize and recognize that there is an overwhelming diversity in dance across the globe. Dancers and choreographers everywhere express ideas and stories using dance. There are many types of dances, you know that very well. Dances like ballet, like waltzes, Tango, Samba, Jive, Salsa, Hip Hop, Modern Dance, which is a huge area, Tap, Jazz. And of course, there are the classical, traditional and folk dances of India. Now across the globe, there is a growing popularity of dance. But you know, all dancers are not professional dancers. Many take dance purely as a social activity or as a regimen for health and wellness. In fact, dance is being actively woven into fitness regimes for its advantages as not just a physical exercise, but a physical exercise with emotional benefits. It is equally important for you to recognize and understand that all stakeholders in the world of dance are not dancers per se. Many are teachers, choreographers and scholars who may have danced sometime but may not have pursued a performance career. Many artists from related fields within the broad spectrum of the arts support dancers like musicians costume designers, photo artists. Thus the constituency of dance is not restricted to dancers alone. It's a much wider constituency. In today's world, amateur dancers far exceed professional dancers. Many dancers, due to the uncertain earning capacities of dance as a profession, work two jobs. One to bring in financial stability and the other to satisfy their emotional desire to dance. Dance happens everywhere, be it in urban settings or in rural parts of the country. It happens in solo formats and it happens in groups. Thus, it is not possible always to do an exact census of dancers in the world. Men dance. Women dance, even transgenders dance, adults dance and children dance. Able-bodied and differently abled people all dance. Dance is a cultural, ritual, social, community, therapeutic, artistic and economic activity. You know, it's not only men who dance in India. Even the gods dance, for most gods have a dance related myth and iconography. Nataraj, Krishna, Nartana Ganapati. In some countries, even animals are trained to dance. Not just street and circus animal performances am I referring to, but highly professionally run dance schools like the Lipizzaner stallions of Vienna come to mind. Have you seen the dancing horses of Vienna? Well, they are really quite a tourist attraction. 
Then there is an entire industry of dance presenters, enablers, nurturers, impresarios, patrons and sponsors. They are all essential for keeping the chain of artistic talent going and for framing and showcasing the art in a favorable manner. Critics of dance too become important in this process as they often put the spotlight on artistic dance, showing the mirror to dancers and choreographers and suggesting improvements apart from highlighting the importance of their creative work. Then there is this entire genre of dance films. There are several hundred dance film festivals in the world, of which at least 50 are very significant festivals as listed by the Dance Films Association. So this is the first association I am referring to. Dance filmmakers make all kinds of films around dance. They include promotional films, documentaries, shorts, thematic and abstract films. In India, there are some very small uh, dance film festivals uh, like Cree Foundation's Dance Lens and the short dance film segment that was once part of the Mumbai International Film Festival. But I have come across a wonderful blog written by an American lover of Indian dance called Cinema Nritya Gharana. It's a blog, so you can visit it and read about it. Dance is a demanding art and it is as vulnerable an ecosystem as the rainforests. Regrettably, we know very little about dances from other parts of the world. Sometimes we do not know enough about dances that we are familiar with, dances that we see around us. And we are most certainly vague about dance histories and what once was. In any case, even dance as we know it today has not been a fixed, unchanging entity and hence has a recent history as well. This is where archiving and dance becomes important. Archiving dance via films, photographs, memorabilia, um, autobiographical pieces is an important activity, not just as an activity that feeds a sense of identity, but it is also a recognition of the fact that dance is an intangible heritage of all of mankind. Linking the different communities that create and facilitate dance are the various dance organizations. Some of them are national and some international. International organizations are organized at both the regional level and at the global level. They play many roles, but the most significant is that they create a forum whereby stakeholders in dance can come together, exchange ideas, learn about each other's work and learn best practices from each other. Often for the same activity, there is more than one organization in existence. Possibly the bifurcation of the original or the appearance of the second conglomeration comes about on personality issues. But in a bigger picture, it seems to testify to the diversity of thought and practice in existence. Some organizations become important for the fact that they play an organizational role and present dance as festivals, showcases and competitions. Some of these organizations work with an eclectic spectrum of dance while others are more specifically and unilaterally directed. An example of a specifically directed organization is the World Salsa Federation. The World Salsa Federation was formed in 2001, established to promote the dance as an art and as a sport, to conduct competitions, 
to elevate the status of dancers, to professionalize dance as a whole through the introduction of syllabi and examinations, to foster the harmonious relations between all dance organizations and to develop world-class artists and dance sport athletes. It aimed at standardizing a syllabus and curriculum, teaching skills, accreditation, and worked towards creating institutional links. Actually, at the heart of dance is the process of developing appropriate skills. Who develops the skill? The dance teacher. So the role of the dance teacher is critical to training the next generation of dancers. Ensuring that dance teachers have the necessary capacity, skill and training takes on to take on this responsibility becomes a, a very important factor. Now in India, there was traditionally never such a concern. Folk dances were learned via a process of cultural osmosis as a community activity. In the more artistic dances, individual genius was prized and the Guru Shishya Parampara with its long years of training was the only way to learn dance. In that context, the reputation gained by peer appreciation played an important role in building a dance career of a guru and leading to guruship. It was usually by word of mouth that a dancer learned of the guru. In the West, however, it was not like this. And at the turn of the 20th century, some concerns entered this area. And in 1903, remarkable, 1903, an association was formed in the Manchester area of United Kingdoms for dance teachers. The International Dance Teachers Association was limited initially to the ballroom dance form, but later more forms were included. And today the International Dance Teachers Association has grown from a fledgling society to over a membership base of over 7,000 members spread over 55 countries. The IDTA maintains a database of its members who are qualified to teach various dance forms. It facilitates professional qualifications, training courses, seminars and competitions. It encourages fellowship and produces a bi-monthly magazine called Dance International, which is a very convenient go-to resource for dance teachers and dancers. Another interesting and different examples of a wider spectrum organization is the World Dance Sports Federation. Ballroom dance was viewed as a sport in the early part of the 20th century when a competitive quotient was added to what till then was a social activity. It grew in significance gradually and it was the World's Dance Sports Federation that coined the term dance sport in the 1980s. And today it includes not just ballroom but a diverse range of dance genres and practices. Since 2013, the World Dance Sports Federation has been holding the World Dance Sports Games at a global level. It has also been pushing for the inclusion in the Summer Olympics Games of dance sport as an item. Though not possible for the Rio Olympics of 2016, the effort continues. You do know that in order for a sport or discipline to be considered for inclusion in the list of Summer Olympic sports, it must be widely practiced in at least 75 countries spread over four continents. Let us now concentrate on academically driven organizations that prioritize research on dance. The first that comes to mind is CORD, the Congress on Research in Dance, which is a membership driven nonprofit organization that provides opportunities for dance professionals from a broad range of specialities to exchange ideas, resources, and methodologies through publications international and regional conferences and workshops. CORD encourages research in all aspects of dance and many related fields, 
It promotes the accessibility of research materials to students of dance and dance studies. CORD promotes a globally inclusive, respectful dialogue through embodied and discursive approaches to dance research. Building on the rich legacy of dance scholarship, CORD advances innovative and creative understandings of dance. Through mentorship, advocacy and outreach, CORD fosters an international community of current and future dance scholars. Some of CORD's initiatives include the Dance Research Journal, published three times a year. The Dance Research Journal is a premier peer-reviewed journal for dance that includes articles on dance history, theory, pedagogy, politics, science, ethnography, and intersections of the cultural with gender, critical, race, and diasporic studies, amongst other disciplines. The DRJ, as it is popularly called, is currently edited by Mark Franco. Another CORD initiative is the conferences. Annual CORD conferences bring together dance artists, teachers, scholars, and critics to address issues pivotal to dance in both the academic and professional domains. Although each conference has a main theme, the format of the conference provides opportunities through seminar and working groups for individuals interested in specific areas such as pedagogy, choreography, dramaturgy, dance science, ethnography, history, and critical analysis to meet separately and exchange ideas. Members of CORD receive reduced admission to all CORD conferences as well as reduced rate registration to other dance and dance related conferences. Now, CORD presents awards. There are three important awards available to its members. The Oscar G. Brockett Book Prize for Dance Research with a value of $1,000 is awarded each year to the best book in dance published during the previous three calendar years. The Outstanding Scholarly Research in Dance Award is awarded to an exceptional scholar or leader for sustained contributions to dance research. The Dixie Der Award for Outstanding Service to Dance Research recognizes the indispensable aid rendered to the field of dance studies by people who sustain existing structures, institutions and organizations for dance research. The Outstanding Publication in Dance Research Award is another one which recognizes, as the name suggests, outstanding publications. It includes any publicly accessible item such as journal articles, books, films, CDs, DVDs, even computer software and other electronic products that facilitate the access to dance research. Subjects may embrace any area of scholarly research for this award, any publication representing dance scholarship or which has an impact on dance scholarship is eligible. The, now, CORD encourages special opportunities for students to participate in its organization and its conferences. CORD offers discounted student memberships as well as discounted conference registrations and work and study opportunities to make conference attendance more affordable to students. The CORD website is a portal of information for the organization as well as for the dance community as a whole. CORD's website offers job listings, conference announcements, election notices, endowment information. It links to dance resources it takes you to calls for award nomination and other information pertinent to the field of dance. CORD fosters communication and mentorship through the website, especially through features such as the Career Forum. This year, the Congress on Research and Dance celebrates its 50th anniversary. Another organization is the Society for Dance History Scholars, which is a professional global organization for dance historians. 
founded in the United States of America in 1978, it became a non-profit organization in 1983. Since 1996, it has been a member of the American Council of Learned Societies. This membership-driven organization includes dancers and dance scholars, as well as scholars in musicology, anthropology, history, literature, theater, performance studies, and other related fields. Many members combine research and performance. The SDHS advances the field of dance studies through research publication, performance, and outreach to audiences across the arts, humanities, and social sciences. SDHS holds wide-ranging annual conferences. The annual SDHS conference draws participation from around the world, including dance scholars and scholars working in related fields. At the conference, SDHS members gather to share information and ideas, to attend performances, and to engage one another in discussions about research and the state of the field of dance history scholarship. The SDHS typically meets in June on a university campus and in addition to formal papers, presents current research, lecture demonstration and roundtable discussions on special topics. The Society's eight working groups hold informal meetings to discuss their own special interests. Papers are published in the conference proceedings at the discretion of the authors. Students are encouraged to attend and apply for the Selma Jean Cohen Award for outstanding paper as well as for the travel funds available through this graduate student travel grant scheme. One highlight of the conference is the award ceremony where recipients of the Delator Buno Prize and the Gertrude Lippincott Award are honored along with the graduate student winners. SDHS also publishes new scholarship through its proceedings and book series. SDHS's monograph series published by the University of Wisconsin Press answers a growing demand for works that provide fresh analytical perspectives on dancing, dancers, and dances in a global context. Founded in 1988 initially as a periodical publication, in 1994 it was redefined as a monograph series and is now published by the University of Wisconsin Press. Studies in Dance History aims to further the goals of the Society of Dance History Scholars by making widely available the extraordinarily rich and diverse scholarship that is based on methodologies ranging from new methods of historical inquiry to multiple theoretical perspectives that takes place with dance as its subject. Annually, mostly in early spring, conversations across the field of dance studies is brought out by SDHS. This publication reflects the dynamic and diverse membership of SDHS and focuses on themes and debates current in the field of dance studies and the profession, alongside news from the international community of scholars in dance and related disciplines. This keeps members abreast with new and emerging areas of studies, new and emerging trends and patterns, and helps them keep tags on who is working in their field of interest. This facilitates possible lateral collaborations at a future date. On its part, the Society collaborates regularly with peer organizations in the United States and abroad. It has close ties with the Congress on Research in Dance. SDHS also presents annual awards for exemplary scholarship to new and established scholars, including the previously mentioned De La Torre Buno Prize which is awarded annually to a book published in the English language that advances the field of dance studies, named after José Roland de la Torre Buno, the first university press editor to develop a list of titles in dance studies, 
the Dilatore Buno Prize has recognized scholarly excellence in the field since 1973. While all members of SDHS are eligible for this prize, membership is not a prerequisite in its award. Books translated into the English language are acceptable so long as that they have been published during the prize year. Among other significant awards presented by the SDHS is the Gertrude Lippincott Award, which is awarded annually to the best English language article published in dance studies. Named in honor of its donor, a devoted teacher of modern dance in the Midwest and a mentor to many students, this award carries a cash purse of $500. Our next organization that we will study is the World Dance Alliance, which is an independent, non-profit, non-political and non-religious organization. It serves as a primary voice for dance and dancers throughout the world and encourages the exchange of ideas and the awareness of dance in all forms. WDA was initially the Asia-Pacific Dance Alliance which had been set up in Hong Kong in 1998 by the late Carl Walls, a teacher, scholar and dance festival organizer who sought to promote cooperation between Asian and Western dance communities. Unfortunately, he passed away of cancer in 2002. The change in the name WDA Asia Pacific was effected in 1990 at the Hong Kong International Dance Conference to reflect better the organization's status as a global body. By 1993, the WDA Americas was also established. The World Dance Alliance therefore operates via its regional centers within an overarching global executive, bringing both organizations together in matters of policy and global projects. The presidents for WDA Asia Pacific and WDA Americas are Yunyu Wang and Mary Jane Warner, respectively. Among the main aims of the WDA are to promote the recognition, development and understanding of all forms of dance. It seeks to facilitate communication and exchange among dance individuals, institutions and organizations. Working in the field of dance by providing a forum for discussion of matters relating to dance. It also seeks to encourage and support research, education, criticism, creation of performance and preservation of dance. WDA recognizes the importance of networks and hence it liaises, coordinates and participates in activities of other dance organizations the world over. We now talk about a dance organization that is very specific called DACI, D-A-C-I, standing for Dance and the Child International. This is an association dedicated to dance for children and youth and has an international presence. This nonprofit was founded in 1978 at a conference held at the University of Alberta, Edmonton, Canada, in the belief that every young person should have equal access and opportunity to dance, regardless of ethnic, gender and cultural identity. To that end, the association provides opportunities for young people to experience dance as creators, performers and spectators, it also fosters the inclusion of all forms of dance in both general education and community programs and facilitates exchange and collaboration related to young people's dance both within and between countries through a triennial conference, projects and funding systems. Following the United Nations Declaration of 1979, which was hailed as the International Year of the Child, in 1980, Darcy was invited by the Conseil International de la Danse, which is associated with the UNESCO in an advisory capacity, to join it. 
Darcy attempts to create a network through membership of educators, researchers, artistic directors, choreographers, dancers and administrators who are interested in dance for young people. Each year in May and November, it brings out a newsletter, Darcy in print. It organizes a conference every three years and offers funding to its members for projects that specifically relate to the aims of the association. To new countries who wish to create a Darcy chapter and to support for collaborative research initiatives. Over the years, it has built up an archive of presentations and papers that have been published in conference proceedings. We now talk of another very important international organization called the International Organization for Folk Arts or IOV, which was founded in 1979 by Alexandra Veal, who passed away in 2009. Since then, it has been headed by Carmen de Padilla. The mission of IOV is to protect, preserve, and promote all forms of folk art and folk culture as elements of the intangible cultural heritage of mankind. It attempts to foster understanding and appreciation of cultural diversity amongst all people, thereby enhancing the prospects of world peace. The IOV recognizes that in order for folk culture to benefit future generations, it must not survive only as recorded memories of past generations, but it must survive in the living traditions of people today. Thus, IOV is not only dedicated to researching and documenting all forms of ethnic and indigenous folk art and folk culture, both tangible and intangible, but it is equally interested in transmitting and presenting folk cultural expressions, which it does through sponsoring conferences, as many as eight to 10 a year in various regions of the world, festivals of performing arts, including dance, and exhibitions of costumes, masks, puppetry, and handicrafts. It even has a special program to focus on youth, including a leadership program for them to play a more proactive role in leading the IOV in the future. World Youth Congresses have been held every alternate year. IOV sees folk culture as an intangible heritage of mankind and has been making special efforts for advocacy of the need and for creating the means to safeguarding this intangible cultural heritage. In 2010, UNESCO made IOV a consultant in intangible cultural heritage and has identified 40 IOV experts for the International Cultural Heritage Consultancy Division. In 2012, IOV entered a special consultant status with United Nations Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC, as well. Let us now discuss about CID, the International Dance Council. CID stands for Conseil International de la Danse in French. The CID is an umbrella organization for all forms of dance in the world. It is an international, non-profit, non-governmental organization that was founded in 1973 within the headquarters of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization in Paris. CID advises UNESCO's national and local government agencies, international organizations and institutions. One of the most visible activities that the CID does is to encourage the celebration of the World Dance Day, which falls on 29th April. And I think all of you are aware of it. All of you celebrate World Dance Day. 
On that day, the message of the president of CID is eagerly awaited, for it gives the thematic focus for the year. In 2015, this focus was the relationship of dance with other arts. The World Dance Day is important because it realizes that dance is banned in many countries of the world and we are fortunate that we can dance. So it is a day of brotherhood of dance, of saluting dance and of celebrating dance where, is it, where it exists and putting pressure on allowing dance to exist where it doesn't.